بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو یونیورسٹی آف ایجوکیشن لاہور ڈپارٹمنٹ آف انگلش آئی ایم فقیر حسین اینڈ ایم ٹیچنگ کورس آن نائنٹین سینچری انگلش ناول ویلکم ٹو ٹوڈیز پریزنٹیشن آن تھامس ہارڈیز ناول دا میئر آف کیسٹر بریج And in this presentation, uh, I will try to cover uh, the plot re overview of the novel as well as uh, uh, the major and the minor characters in the novel and uh, further, uh, I'll try to cover uh, the analysis of uh, the major characters and the minor characters and uh, as to how they develop uh, uh, during the course of the novel let's start uh, uh, with the plot overview of the novel uh, michael ha hankard uh, the protagonist of the novel is traveling with his wife uh, susan uh, looking for employment as a hay trusser when they uh, stop uh, to eat something hankard gets drunk and in an auction that begins as a joke but turns serious he sells his wife and uh, their baby daughter uh, named elizabeth jane uh, to a sailor newson richard newson for five guineas But in the morning, uh, Hankard regrets what he has done and searches uh, the whole town for his wife and daughter. But uh, being unable to find them, uh, he goes to a church and swears and knows that he will not drink uh, anymore almost 21 years. He, he he swears that he he, he won't uh, drink alcohol for 21 years the same number of years he has been alive uh, so uh, this is how he uh, commits a, an offense to his wife and uh, uh, his daughter the daughter uh, soon after that uh, uh, died and uh, a daughter was born again uh, to uh, Susan and uh, Newson and she was also named after uh, the dead daughter of uh, Hankard and Susan when after uh, 18 years later Uh, Susan finds herself in a distress and uh, feels that she is legally bound to return to her former husband. Uh, Newson pretends to be dead just to uh, give a sort of uh, relief for Susan so that she may uh, go back to Hankard. Both Susan and uh, Elizabeth Jane seek Hanker after 18 years of uh, the uh, incident of uh, their selling. Elizabeth Jane believes uh, he is merely a long lost relative as Susan uh, tells uh, her daughter. about uh, uh, hankard they are searching for they arrive ultimately in caster bridge and uh, learn that hankard uh, has become the mayor of uh, the town the parents meet and decide that in order to prevent lisbeth jane from learning of their disgrace hankard will court and remarry susan uh, as 
though they had met only recently. Meanwhile, uh, Henchard has hired Donald Farfrey, a young Scotchman, as the new manager of his corn business. Elizabeth Jane uh, is intrigued by Farfrey and the two begin to spend time together. Henchard becomes alienated from Farfrey, however, uh, as the younger man uh, consistently uh, outdoes Henchard in every respect. He asks Farfrey to leave his business and to stop courting uh, Elizabeth Jane. Susan uh, falls ill and dies uh, soon after her remarriage to Henchard. After discovering that Elizabeth Jane uh, is not his own daughter, uh, but Richard Newson's, uh, Henchard becomes increasingly cold toward her. Elizabeth Jane then decides to leave uh, Henchard's house and live with a lady who has just arrived uh, in the town, Lucetta uh, Templeman. Uh, she uh, is the lady, uh, a woman with whom Henchard was involved during uh, Susan's absence. And having learned uh, uh, of Susan's death, Lucetta has come uh, to Casterbridge to marry Henchard. Actually, uh, Susan has uh, informed uh, Henchard about, uh, uh, about uh, Elizabeth Jane, that uh, she was uh, Newson's daughter and not Henchard's, uh, writing, by writing a letter to him and uh, uh, requesting him to open it on the day of uh, uh, wedding of Elizabeth Jane, but he was uh, 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 as he was in very impulsive. Uh, he didn't wait for uh, wedding day of Elizabeth Jane and uh, uh, read it quite earlier, and he came to know about uh, the reality of uh, Elizabeth Jane. Uh, that's why uh, he uh, disowns her. Uh, and she decides to uh, leave his house and live with uh, Lucetta uh, Templeman uh, in the town. While uh, Lucetta uh, is waiting for Henchard to uh, call on her, uh, she uh, meets Farfrey, uh, who has come to call on Elizabeth Jane. The two uh, hit it off uh, and are eventually married Farfrey and uh, Lucetta Templeman. Lucetta uh, now asks Henchard to return to her all the letters uh, she has sent him uh, during the period uh, they have been involved uh, with uh, each other uh, in the absence of uh, Susan. Uh, on his way to uh, deliver the letters, uh, the uh, messenger uh, job uh, stops at an inn. The peasants uh, of the town uh, there convince uh, Job to open and read the letters aloud. In discovering that Lucetta and Henchard have been romantically involved, uh, the peasants decide to hold a schemity rite, a humiliating uh, parade portraying Lucetta uh, and Henchard together. This event uh, uh, takes place one afternoon uh, when Parfrey uh, was away uh, and Lucetta uh, faints upon seeing the whole spectacle uh, and became very ill. She, and shortly afterwards, uh, she dies uh, because of uh, this punishment. While uh, Henchard has grown to hate Farfrey, uh, he has grown closer to Elizabeth Jane. The morning after Lucetta's death, uh, 
new son who is actually still alive arrives at Henchard's door and asks for Elizabeth Jane. Henchard tells him that she is dead and new son leaves in sorrow. It was uh, outrightly uh, a lie that was told to Newson by Henchard. Again, a moral crime uh, that was committed by uh, Henchard. Elizabeth Jane stays with Henchard and also begins to spend more time with Parfrey. One day, uh, Henchard learns that Newson has returned to town and he decides to uh, leave rather than uh, risk another confrontation with him. Elizabeth Jane is uh, uh, reunited with Newson uh, and uh, learns of Henchard's deceit because he has uh, uh, had told uh, a lie to uh, Newson about uh, uh, Elizabeth Jane. Newson and Parfrey start planning the wedding between uh, Elizabeth Jane and uh, uh, Farfrey. Henchard uh, comes back to Casterbridge after knowing uh, about the wedding uh, uh, between uh, Elizabeth Jane and Scotsman. Uh, on the night of uh, the wedding, uh, Henchard comes back to Casterbridge to see Elizabeth Jane, but she snubs him. He leaves again, telling her that he will not return. She soon regrets her coldness towards uh, Henchard uh, and she uh, and uh, Farfrey, uh, her new husband, uh, go looking for uh, Henchard so that she can make her peace. But unfortunately, uh, they find uh, him too late, uh, discovering that he had died alone in the countryside. He uh, had left a will uh, and it was his dying wish as well uh, to be forgotten, not to be remembered anymore by anyone. Uh, it was uh, uh, the uh, plot overview of uh, the novel, uh, The Mayor of Casterbridge. You can uh, go through the text uh, uh, as well as the detailed uh, summaries of uh, uh, the chapters of uh, uh, the novel to uh, better understand uh, the characters, uh, the relationship, uh, relationships between the characters uh, and uh, how the story uh, logically uh, develops uh, from uh, beginning to the climax and then onwards uh, towards the end of the novel. Hardy uh, sets his novels within the semi-fictitious landscape of Wessex. The reader can easily identify the scenery and towns described in the narrative located within the southwest of England. And the specific sense of place detailed in Hardy's fiction is very important as it uh, provides a, a realistic uh, countrified backdrop against which his many characters live out their lives and struggle against their circumstances. The Wessex of uh, Hardy's novels presents a sort of microcosm of human life through which Hardy uh, basically intends to comment on the uh, universal condition of human existence. So uh, Hardy uh, establishes a reciprocal relationship between uh, environment uh, and character and the interaction which serves to uh, demonstrate the changing position of humans uh, in the post-Darwinian Victorian period.
so uh, the environment in hardy's novels affect the characters living in that environment uh, have a great effect uh, and they grow uh, along with the environment of their living for characterization purpose hardy exploits uh, various tools as well like actions direct characterization speech and dialogue hardy lets us know what characters are like in part through how they act their actions lead us even to uh, what is going on in their minds in the minds of the character we come to know uh, through the inner working of characters uh, through their uh, external actions for example uh, just look at the opening scene of uh, uh, the mayor of caster bridge the way uh, henchard is uh, uh, walking uh, we come to know that he is a proud and distant and indifferent to his wife uh, when they are talking to each other the narrator doesn't tell us what michael and susan are thinking and they haven't started talking yet but the way henchard uh, walks we come to know uh, about uh, uh, his feelings towards his wife susan uh, through uh, direct characterization uh, the narrator uh, uh, hardy tries to uh, portray uh, his characters uh, details about uh, the characters uh, sometimes in the uh, novel uh, come through his direct uh, comments about the character and as the novel uh, goes on the narrator starts being more communicative about what the characters are likely are uh, really like for example uh, he tells us directly that Uh, henchard was the kind of man uh, to whom some human object for pouring out his heat upon were it effective or what it choleric was almost a necessity that is to say that henchard uh, needed uh, other people to project his emotions and feelings and thoughts onto so through this sort of uh, uh, direct comments uh, uh, on uh, characters personalities uh, their intentions and their uh, disposition uh, hardy tries to uh, portray his characters quite realistically and gives us uh, an insight into uh, their being as well as their uh, inner working then he uses speech and dialogue as well uh, and as in the novel we see that uh, far free scotsman he is uh, he is from scotland his dialect comes through in his speech which sets him apart from uh, the other uh, people in the town henchard too uh, speaks differently and speaking standard english was a, at that time uh, was a sign of having received a formal education uh, henchard uh, uh, use of regional words and expressions uh, uh, exposes that he uh, hasn't uh, uh, been uh, well educated uh, in his life same uh, is the case with uh, elizabeth jane uh, we come to know that his accent is charming and sweet but uh, for henchard uh, is is a reminder of class distinction uh, that he rather uh, forget it also uh, infuriates uh, his his step father because it shows that uh, she wasn't uh, well educated 
so uh, personality of the character and his actions are like a card game actions are uh, the essential uh, unavoidable consequences of the personality of his characters and uh, the characters haven't any control over uh, the actions and those actions uh, actually uh, lead the characters to his doom just to imply that uh, it is not only fate that is uh, uh, at work to uh, doom the character uh, rather it's, it's also the mistakes uh, on the part of the character his uh, wrong decisions and his actions uh, are also responsible for uh, the doom of uh, uh, the character or the protagonist especially as for the uh, characters of the novel the mayor of caster bridge uh, are concerned here we have the list of uh, characters including major and minor characters we have uh, michael henchard uh, the protagonist of the novel elizabeth jane newson donald farfrey uh, lucetta templeman richard newson joshua job susan henchard and uh, we have uh, some uh, villagers the, the called the rustic group uh, the comprising most of the minor characters sir so benjamin grower uh, nancy mockridge solomon longways abel wetel uh, christopher cone and mother cooksum all the characters uh, major and minor uh, have their share and contribute to the development of plot and lead the novel to its particular end here we uh, have a, a analysis of uh, the characters involved in the uh, novel the mayor of caster bridge and uh, we uh, look at how the characters uh, move and develop uh, uh, along with the course of the novel let's start uh, with uh, michael henchard uh, the protagonist of the novel as the novel's protagonist michael henchard is the man of character the whole novel follows him uh, and uh, uh, it is to him uh, that the subtitle of uh, the mayor of caster bridge alludes when the novel op opens henchard is a uh, disconsolate 21 year old hairdresser who in a drunken rage sells his wife and daughter uh, at a country fair Nineteen years later, uh, he has risen to become uh, the mayor uh, and the most accomplished corn merchant uh, in the town of Caster Bridge. Although he tries to compensate for his youthful crimes, uh, especially the one uh, of uh, selling his wife and uh, daughter at a country fair. he uh, focuses uh, too much on his past misdeeds and enters a, a downward trajectory that involves him uh, in a kind of a uh, very fierce competition with donald farfrey like his uh, uh, wife uh, susan he believes that an evil fate is responsible for his misfortune however unlike his wife he tries to fight back against his fate with his bullish nature he struggles hard to avert the uh, doom that fate uh, fate has to offer him 
he does have a kind spirit wanting to make amends to Susan and Elizabeth Jane his daughter uh, and he happily takes uh, far free as well uh, under his wing as a, a new manager to his uh, uh, corn business uh, caring for the poor of the village uh, inviting them uh, on uh, certain occasions and uh, is regarded as a very honest uh, man uh, among the people of uh, the town. He also lives with high morals, confessing in several instances uh, when he could easily lie. Yet when he believes he is crossed, uh, he becomes extremely angry uh, and will stop at nothing to ruin his rival, as we see uh, in the case of uh, his competition uh, with Donald Parfrey, uh, when he uh, goes against him just because he uh, has disobeyed him uh, to uh, court uh, uh, Elizabeth Chain. He forbids him uh, and uh, ultimately uh, asks him to leave him and his business. Unfortunately, uh, he always comes to regret his anger, usually when it is too late to make amends. The whole uh, novel tries to determine in a way uh, how far his character works against him. I mean, his own actions, his mistakes and his wrong decisions, uh, his, his uh, actions, uh, how far they contribute to his, uh, uh, his doom uh, and uh, how far uh, the heartless fate is responsible for uh, the downfall of uh, uh, Michael Henchard. At the end of the uh, novel, uh, the ruined Michael Henchard uh, wills that no one remember his name after his death. Uh, this request is profoundly, profoundly uh, startling and tragic in a way. Uh, and especially uh, when one considers how important Henchard's name has been to him during his lifetime. And after committing the abominable deeds uh, of uh, selling his wife and child, Henchard wakes from a drunken stupor and wonders, uh, first and foremost, if he told any of the fair goers his name. And after 18 years, uh, of uh, the scene of selling his wife and daughter uh, on, on the heath of uh, Waden Friars and uh, Henchard's reunion with Sosen in Casterbridge between these two events, uh, it's immediately, he immediately realizes uh, the value that uh, Henchard uh, places on uh, a good name and reputation. Not only uh, has he climbed from Heertraser to mayor of a small agricultural town, but he labors to protect the esteem his higher position affords him. And when Susan and Elizabeth Jane come upon the mayor uh, hosting a banquet for the town's most important citizens, they witness a man struggling to convince the masses that despite a mismanaged harvest, uh, he's been uh, an honest person with a worthy name. Guilt acts like a fuel that keeps Henchard moving towards uh, his own death. And unable uh, to forget the events uh, that uh, took place in the Formity uh, woman's tent, he sets out to punish himself again and again. Being a restless uh, and self accusing soul, uh, he appears to be uh, seeking out situations uh, that further aggravate uh, his situation. Like we see. Uh, 
the competition he starts with the Donald Farfrey and uh, the way he appropriates uh, his job business and even uh, wins uh, the love of uh, his loved one uh, Elizabeth Jane he ultimately loses the uh, uh, competition with the uh, Farfrey but he uh, never uh, tries to lessen his sufferings uh, by some uh, appeal or elaborate argument. He, he fails to sufficiently value himself uh, to do this, to seek uh, pardon, to uh, scum himself to the situation. He never uh, relinquishes uh, his talent for uh, endurance, whatsoever uh, may be the pain uh, he bears it and this is uh, the quality uh, that elevates him to the uh, level of a hero a man ironically uh, his, na his name deserves to be remembered let's uh, discuss the character of elizabeth jane uh, hankard and uh, elizabeth jane newson Elizabeth Jane Henchard uh, is a small girl. Uh, she's sold with her uh, mother, Susan, for five guineas to Newson the sailor. But just after three months of uh, uh, the auction, after the auction, she dies. Uh, the one trait uh, uh, Michael Henchard remembers about her uh, is her black hair and after his uh, her death uh, we have uh, elizabeth jane newson and uh, she was named after uh, the the name of uh, uh, elizabeth jane uh, henchard and when uh, elizabeth jane uh, newson is introduced she is described as a woman uh, who is possessed of uh, uh, that ephemeral precious essence of youth but she is modest about her beauty and goodness she is also uh, a proper young lady who seeks to act correctly and to be judged as respectable elizabeth jane uh, is a modest and unassuming as well as a, a compassionate girl and uh, there are different uh, situations where we can uh, find uh, examples of his modesty and uh, compassion uh, for example when he shudders as she learns that her mother goes to the tent of the old formative woman because she thinks that respectable people do not go there again when she realizes that three mariners uh, is too expensive uh, for her mother's pockets she does not hesitate to uh, defray the expenses by uh, working as a maid even we see that when uh, she is established as the mayor's step uh, daughter she uh, does not let the fact go to her head uh, but continues to live in a modest way uh, displaying a, a silent sober manner she is quite aware of uh, her drawbacks as well uh, like uh, the painful lack of learning in her uh, but she never lets her drawbacks defeat her and with the laborious and uh, painstaking efforts uh, she always tries to teach and better herself elizabeth jane uh, has the uh, ability to grasp the meaning of uh, situations and at, in, in different situations uh, he makes sense of uh, the situations and handles it quite uh, uh, 
perfectly. She also uh, tends to see the best in people and is uh, uh, loyal to them. Uh, for example, when Lucetta uh, steals far free from her, Elizabeth Jane does not abandon Lucetta. Rather, she continues to uh, live with her uh, with the most love and affection. This silent uh, uh, reserved girl does not want any harm to come to anyone, be it Lucetta, Henchard, uh, or Farfrey, or any other character. So although uh, Elizabeth Jane has not been treated kindly by life, uh, she is not a bitter person. Instead, she tries to better herself and help others. When she finds happiness uh, with Farfrey at the end of the book, uh, the reader uh, almost feels delighted. Then we have uh, uh, Donald Farfrey, the young Scotchman uh, who serves as a contrast to uh, uh, Henchard. Farfrey is a man of intellect and he has a, a business efficiency. Uh, he has other qualities as well uh, like good humor uh, and refinement about his character uh, that brings him popularity among the town's citizens. Uh, he brings to Ca uh, Casterbridge a method for salvaging damaged grain, a system for reorganizing uh, and uh, revolutionizing the mayor's business when uh, Michael uh, quickly realizing Farfrey's great head for business and makes him general manager. So uh, he is a blend of curiosity and ambition that enables him to take interest in uh, an advantage of uh, the agricultural advancement of the day. Farfrey uh, is well-rounded, he knows business and he also understands society's desire for courtly manners and entertainment. He greatly respects Farfrey, uh, this uh, Michael Henchard, greatly respects Farfrey and uh, asks him for uh, advice on several occasions as well. However, uh, Farfrey has everything uh, that uh, Michael doesn't. Uh, the love of Lucetta, uh, uh, the support of the townspeople, uh, popularity and respect of uh, uh, his fellow townspeople, uh, and eventually uh, the mayorship of Castor Bridge uh, towards the end of uh, the novel, uh, he, he gets the mayorship as well. And uh, to crown the whole uh, situation uh, about Donald Free, he, uh, at the end of the novel, he uh, finds the happiness in his marriage uh, to Elizabeth Jane. So he, uh, throughout uh, his career, uh, because of his uh, uh, courtly uh, manners and, and uh, qualities of head and heart, uh, he becomes a, a rival uh, for Henchard, but he always remains uh, uh, quite fair uh, and uh, very uh, patient and uh, uh, very kind towards the people uh, and in his dealings. Uh, his uh, victories uh, against uh, uh, far free uh, this uh, Henchard uh, and uh, the whole competition. Uh, they are because uh, uh, in the name of uh, progress, uh, then his personal uh, satisfaction, uh, that is not meant for that. He appears to be a man of science uh, uh, with, a, with a stereotypical sort of uh, strengths and weaknesses. Uh, this is how Hardy uh, portrays uh, Donald Farfrey in the novel. And we can uh, further uh, uh, learn about his characters uh, when we go through the novel in detail. Lucetta uh, Templeman uh, is a flighty and indiscreet woman uh, who follows her emotions only. She's a woman whom Hank 
Henchard meets uh, uh, Kurtz and uh, even proposes to marry. She uh, never takes care of uh, the conventions and the moral standards and the values of characters. She uh, follows her emotions and uh, uh, choose to love uh, whom she please, uh, pleases and whenever she uh, pleases to do so. So that's how uh, she goes uh, uh, against the conventions and moral standards and uh, uh, values of a character. She is always uh, uh, guided by her emotions and her reactions are uh, never uh, rational at all. She therefore uh, lives quite recklessly uh, as uh, she is guided by uh, her emotions uh, and uh, she also uh, has to face uh, the consequences uh, for uh, following her passions only. In her youth, she uh, met Michael uh, Henchard in her native Jersey. Uh, she wishes to marry him, uh, but she stopped to do so uh, because Susan uh, returns to uh, Henchard. But after Susan's death, uh, she moves to uh, the town of Casterbridge to keep an eye uh, on Michael and uh, renew her relationship with uh, uh, Michael Henchard. Uh, however, uh, she falls in love with Michael's uh, rival Farfree and marries him. But she uh, constantly uh, remains frightened uh, uh, that Michael will reveal their past connection uh, through her scandalous love letter she has been writing to him. So she demands her letters, love letters back from Michael. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, the love letters uh, uh, were read by the townspeople of Casterbridge and they hold a, a, a security uh, right to mock the relationship between Lusta and Michael Henchard. Uh, this uh, shock of uh, seeing uh, the security ride kills uh, Lucetta. So she uh, emerges not as a, a, a character with a heroic stature, uh, rather her uh, manners are very much like, uh, uh, like childish and uh, she is quite uh, imprudent, uh, having uh, no uh, uh, good things about her characters. An emotionally uh, volatile uh, Victorian female, she represents through uh, her character. Richard Newson uh, is the kind sailor who uh, offers to buy Susan and Elizabeth Jane hand card, uh, but not before uh, asking Susan if she is willing to go with him. Newson uh, is absent for most of the novel and his eventual uh, reappearance uh, uh, actually uh, reflects the feeling that uh, Henchard is besieged by fate. Newson, uh, after the death of Elizabeth Jane Henchard uh, dies, becomes the father of Elizabeth Jane Newson. Later he uh, fakes uh, uh, his death at sea, uh, planning to uh, return after a few months for uh, her daughter Elizabeth Jane. And even though uh, he discovers that Mike, Michael Henchard has uh, lied about Elizabeth Jane's death, uh, he asks Elizabeth Jane to forgive him. His wife uh, uh, Susan and uh, his daughter uh, Elizabeth Jane they uh, state about uh, uh, 
new son that uh, he's a kind uh, jovial my, uh, man uh, and uh, very caring uh, for uh, both Susan and uh, uh, his daughter Jane Elizabeth Jane and it is uh, uh, he, he uh, fixes his uh, uh, death just uh, when he feels that uh, Susan uh, feels it uh, uh, legally uh, bound to return to uh, her uh, former or her first husband Michael Henchard uh, to relieve uh, uh, Susan from this distress he fakes his daughter uh, death uh, but later uh, in the novel he reappears uh, after the death of Susan and uh, he takes care of uh, uh, his daughter Elizabeth Jane and uh, even prepares for uh, her marriage with the uh, far free Hen uh, his trusting nature is shown again uh, when uh, he takes uh, Henchard's word at face value and uh, uh, departs without even visiting the uh, cemetery when he uh, lies about the death of uh, uh, Elizabeth Jane uh, when he first time uh, appears in the uh, on the scene uh, in the town of Casterbridge, uh, this new son. So the story of uh, his loss at sea is a kindly uh, a deception by which he will give Susan uh, the freedom to uh, return to uh, Henkar. So uh, he he uh, basically uh, very kind and forgiving and uh, trust uh, uh, trusting sort of a man uh, and. Uh, even after his uh, reappearance in the on, on the scene of the novel uh, he uh, comes to Custard Bridge uh, uh, seeks to uh, find out uh, his daughter uh, and uh, remains uh, uh, unsuccessful uh, in the beginning but eventually uh, he gets re reunited with his daughter uh, Elizabeth Jane Joshua Jopp uh, uh, is the uh, one of the characters who represents the worst kind of uh, people uh, that small time life uh, small town life can uh, offer to us he's a uh, small minded and uh, unforgiving actually he is the first uh, applicant for the position of michael henchard's uh, general manager of his corn business uh, and because farfrey was chosen a job hates him and will do anything to ruin him. From this point, uh, Job uh, behaves as a typical villain who hasn't uh, uh, any uh, moral standard uh, and uh, uh, pricks of uh, conscience. It's quite immoral and uh, unscrupulous and uh, no more as uh, uh, remorse for, uh, uh, for, for his misdeeds even. He hates Lucetta as well uh, because she refuses to help him uh, and he plays upon the hatred of the townspeople uh, and the weaknesses of Michael uh, to ruin her. He has, uh, uh, as I earlier said, that he has no uh, remorse uh, uh, for his mistakes and feels they are quite justified. He enjoys nothing. Uh, more than bringing people down to uh, his own level. He is a, uh, a villain uh, outrightly and uh, this is how he uh, uh, in a way rep represents the uh, darker side uh, of the uh, small village life. One uh, redeeming quality of his character is that uh, uh, at the end of the novel when uh, Michael Henchard uh, needs uh, shelter for a few days uh, he requests Joshua uh, for the same and uh, he uh, grants him the permission to live with him uh, at the end of the novel and that is the one uh, quality uh, Joshua 
Job has about his character. Susan uh, is a purposely vague character uh, who seems to endure all she has undergone uh, with stoicism. She believes that everything uh, that happens to her is controlled by uh, a menacing fate, and even the events of the novel seem to support her view as well. Uh, she is uh, uh, shown to have a weak uh, constitution, uh, a very meek sort of uh, lady, unassuming and dim-minded woman, uh, expecting little, very little from life. Uh, her daughter uh, appears to be the only light in uh, this gloomy existence uh, that she takes care of and uh, she's quite uh, protective of her. She uh, accompanies Michael Henchard uh, to uh, Widen uh, Priors uh, and seems to be a dutiful uh, wife to him. However, uh, upon being sold for five guineas only, uh, she becomes angry uh, and willingly leaves with Newson, uh, the sailor, to whom uh, Henchard sells uh, Susan and his daughter. But she uh, very effectively dissolves the marriage with Michael uh, Henchard. And after Newson's death, uh, she returns to uh, Wessex, uh, the town of uh, Casterbridge, to find her husband, uh, to whom she uh, feels uh, that she is uh, legally bound to return. Um, and although she eventually has a normal marriage with Michael, uh, she carries the secret of Elizabeth Jane's birth with her to her grave. Uh, she reveals it uh, uh, to Michael Henchard uh, only through a letter that should be uh, opened on Elizabeth's uh, uh, wedding day. But uh, as uh, we know that Henchard was quite impulsive and uh, he couldn't wait for uh, that distant day. So, so she op he, he opened the letter and uh, came to uh, know the reality about uh, Elizabeth Jane. Though we uh, see that uh, uh, Susan is uh, a bit ignorant about the world, but she is very cunning uh, as far as uh, the affairs concerning Elizabeth Jane uh, are concerned. And she purposefully does not disclose Henchard's relationship to uh, Elizabeth Jane. And uh, she does not disclose the secret about uh, Elizabeth Jane to Henchard. She only tells Elizabeth Jane that he is a, a distant relative uh, and uh, because uh, uh, when she uh, needs a, uh, a person to take care of Elizabeth Jane after uh, her death, when she gets uh, uh, dead, uh, she through all means uh, convinces Michael Henchard that uh, uh, Elizabeth Jane is uh, really uh, his daughter. She also uh, opposes uh, uh, Elizabeth Jane's name because uh, uh, when uh, Elizabeth Jane Henchard dies uh, and uh, Elizabeth Jane uh, Newson was born, uh, she names uh, uh, her after the name of uh, her uh, former daughter, Elizabeth Jane Henchard. So all such uh, uh, activities have been done purposefully by Susan. Uh, but uh, we can uh, uh, assume that uh, her character was not fully uh, developed by uh, Hardy uh, to uh, gain the real pity from the reader. Uh, and uh, because of the restricted function uh, of her character uh, just to keep the plot moving in the story. And she does it well and uh, as uh, uh, her function is over, uh, she dies very conveniently. The minor characters, uh, 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 for example, Abel Whittle, Mother Coxon, uh, they make uh, the rustic group. 
and uh, in Hardy's novels, uh, they are always uh, uh, local folk who uh, are born and uh, bred in uh, the town of Castro Bridge uh, and know everyone who lives in the town and uh, whatever is going on uh, with the people uh, who are living in the town. They uh, provide uh, a sort of a double function. Uh, they uh, introduce an element of uh, humor uh, in, in, in the novel uh, that is a tragic story. Uh, and uh, the second one is uh, to comment on uh, the situations and the actions of the character. So uh, we find that uh, unlike the people of uh, Weden uh, Priors, uh, the people of Casterbridge make it a point to remark and get involved in the affairs of the other townspeople. They are uh, the ones who uh, point out that uh, Michael's crops door sell, that Farfrey is a charming and wise young man that Lucetta uh, needs a, a, a sort of a retribution, uh, a punishment uh, uh, out of uh, the moral uh, outrage. And uh, through these remarks, uh, uh, they actually uh, function in the novel uh, very much like uh, the chorus functions in the uh, Greek tragedy. So, uh, but unlike uh, the uh, character of the Greek tragedy, uh, character of chorus, uh, they uh, provide uh, uh, a, a sort of uh, humor uh, as well. They uh, are sometimes divided in their allegiance to people uh, as can be seen in the uh, schemity ride as well. And, but on the whole, uh, if we take them, uh, these rustics uh, represent a uh, uh, multiple uh, sort of voices, uh, attitudes, uh, and uh, values uh, of the 19th century uh, village life. Uh, this is uh, uh, all from my side as far as uh, the characters, the characterization, the, the development uh, along the course of the novel uh, is concerned. Uh, but you can uh, go through uh, more details to uh, understand uh, the whole uh, scenario uh, about the major as well as uh, about the minor characters of the novel. Thank you very much uh, for the long lecture and your patience. Uh, thank you once again.